Hi folks, it's Jeff Hunter from Evolve Thermal Energy. Thanks for checking out our video. It is late February uh, 2023. The year is moving by very quickly and that's probably because we've been busy speaking to dozens of homeowners since the start of 2023 about heat pumps and electrifying their home HVAC and water heating systems. Today I wanted to cut into a video of a geothermal heat pump installation that was completed um, earlier in January, early mid-January this year. So we had some video from that that I haven't put together yet. So I wanted to show you that today. And just to preface that, uh, horizontal ground loops, what you're gonna see in the video is a application in rural Southwestern Ontario where we have uh, two five-ton uh, horizontal ground loops going in on the same site. We have a, a home and then a business, a shop, a garage in the same site. So two independent systems there. Um, the size of a ground loop, or at least focusing on horizontal ground loops, is um, can be configured. So what you'll see in this application is we had a lot of area because we're dealing in a a um, agricultural area where we have a farmer's field with some crops that we're able to get under. Um, in the off season. So we have as much room as we could possibly uh, use. And so the horizontal loop is spread out over a, uh, a large area to keep installation costs down and keep it simplified. Uh, a horizontal loop can be configured to meet the needs of the property within reason. So there is a limitation to what, uh, what can be done, uh, but certainly we can compress that loop um, differently than is shown in the video here. So we'll cut to that in a moment. I do also want to just summarize here over the last uh, few weeks as we've been talking to consumers about their home heating systems, we're seeing an emerging opportunity for air to water heat pump systems. Now as a distributor for Entertech uh, heat pumps, Entertech carries the Entertech Advantage air to water in two and a half and five ton capacities. And so we've been looking at these different applications and seeing that there is a really good fit between um, a ground source heat pump. So let's say we don't have much space. So it's in an urban area or a suburban area where we don't have a lot of uh, land area. And the only option for geothermal would be to uh, drill down vertically. Now, in some cases, the economics can uh, still make sense here in the longer term. But if we get into situations where we're dealing with, let's say, uh, heavy rock conditions and the drilling equipment to do the borehole is uh, a little more costly, uh, then I'm seeing a really good fit for the air to water between that ground source heat pump system and then on the lower end would be the um, cold climate vapor injected air source heat pump. So we're still looking at fully electrifying space conditioning and water heating if we look on both scopes of that, ground source being on the high end as far as uh, performance and efficiency and reliability and long-term investment case, uh, cold climate vapor injected air source being on the lower end there, fitting right in the middle very nicely is that air to water system. Now air to water, people say, can, you, can I still do an air to water? I don't have a hydronic system. Certainly you can, we couple it with hydronic air handlers for uh, hydronic forced air heating and then we chill the water in the hydronic air handler in the summertime to provide uh, exceptional cooling performance because we can really do a lot more with that chilled water than we can with um, a refrigerant based system uh, as you a heat pump is based on balance so if we're using a refrigerant through our um, air handling circuit uh, we need to make sure that the heat we're rejecting or the heat we're absorbing is in balance with both sides of those systems, uh, vice versa. So in a hydronic situation, we have a little bit more flexibility with what we can do in that hydronic air handler. So it's, it lends itself really, really well to an air to water heat pump and specifically the advantage because of a couple of things. Number one, uh, there's an outdoor unit, of course, so the outdoor coil, which also contains the entirety of the refrigeration system. So it is called a monoblock uh, heat pump because the refrigeration circuit is all packaged into that outdoor unit. So we're not running a refrigerant line to and from the indoor unit. We're running hydronic lines. Uh, 
Number two, there's an indoor module that makes installation super easy for mechanical contractors. All of the hydronic components, uh, auxiliary heat controls, everything is built into this indoor module that mounts on the wall, connects to the outdoor unit, and then we pipe to our uh, hydronic air, ha air handler. Uh, the third thing I would say is the piping is simplified as well because we use direct to load piping because of the nature of our variable speed compressor in the system and the combination of that variable compressor and the variable speed circulators. So they're able to do this precise dance of matching the load requirements that the unit sees from the hydronic air handler or if you had radiant floor or whatnot, it would, it would match to that. So it's a bit of a departure from what we have been training contractors on over the last number of years with heat pumps, uh, certainly single stage and two stage heat pumps is putting a buffer tank in between. And that buffer tank was there to allow for uh, two things, adequate runtime of the refrigeration system so that we're not short cycling, but also uh, disconnecting the hydraulic needs of both sides of the system. So a heat pump needs a certain flow rate to keep it happy, single stage or two stage, and then the load side of your system needs a certain flow rate to get uh, to keep it happy. And those don't always match. Well, in the variable capacity situation, we can match them uh, pretty precisely. So now we can eliminate that extra cost of piping, tank, buffer tank, all of that, the additional circulator on the other side of the tank. So we're eliminating a lot of costs in a typical uh, water to water heat pump hydronic example. And even from a boiler standpoint, you do often see, um, well, you definitely need hydraulic separations there in, in uh, high efficiency condensing boilers. These days, those boilers will have a circulator for the boiler built into them commonly. That circulator is sized just to meet the needs of the boiler and its temperature rise. Then you would do, uh, and we've been training contractors on this for the last decade, hydraulic separation between the boiler and the load side of the system. So then you would have a system pump on the other side of the hydraulic separator or the closely spaced T's or what have you. So now we're eliminating that second pump. So that's a, that's a big advantage there, keeping the watts that we use for heating down as low as possible. The final little benefit I'm gonna talk about here with the Advantage Air to Water system is domestic hot water. We can produce domestic hot water through a specialized uh, indirect tank, and I call it specialized because it's a tank that has a uh, large heat exchange surface so that we can keep the supply water temperature to the domestic tank as low as possible. We want that temperature to be as low as possible because the lower it is, the higher the performance of the air to water heat pump, the higher the COP. So that specialized tank coupled to the air to water heat pump can produce pretty much all of your hot water needs. Now we have a bit of a caveat there because in Ontario, we have um, building code requirements for storing domestic hot water. So we do need to boost that to store it at 140 degrees to make sure we're el eliminating or alleviating any Legionella concerns. And then it would be mixed down to a delivery temperature after that. So in many cases, you would have this uh, specialized indirect tank coupled to a final electric delivery tank that just stores the water at that uh, required temperature. So this gives you fully electrified heating, cooling, and hot water at the performance very close to a ground source heat pump. So when we're running out our energy analysis for different homeowners, we're seeing only a few hundred dollars difference annually uh, between the operation of a ground source heat pump and this air to water heat pump. And I will, uh, during this video, hopefully I have shown some images of the performance of the air to water heat pump and done some snapshots. So I will add those in if I haven't done those yet. And you can see, uh, how the geothermal system compares to air to water compares to a typical 19 sear uh, variable capacity air source heat pump. So we'll leave it at that. Going to sneak in here into our geothermal, a couple of shots from our January geothermal installation. Thanks very much. If any questions uh, evolve thermal energy, our job is to help guide homeowners through the process of electrifying their home HVAC and hot water needs and connecting them to 
qualified contractors throughout Ontario and Eastern Canada. So give us a call at Evolve Thermal Energy. Check out our website, evolvethermal.com. Looking forward to talk to you soon. Have a great afternoon. Take care.